there are a straight shadow from the sun and a contact occlusion shadow under the object. If we use photo editing of people, you should also take it into account. An object in shadow has a diffuse shadow anyway, when it is with the sky. So how to make it? That's very easy. And then in theory, the shadow between the legs here should also be deeper, brighter. So what do we do? We just copy this layer and scale it down. All right, and so perhaps the last thing we'll cover is the contact occlusion shadows. So what is contact occlusion shadows? So if your object is in the shade, it doesn't mean that it does not cast its own shadow. If we look at a car, there's a shadow under it. There are a straight shadow from the sun and a contact occlusion shadow under the object. If we use photo editing of people, you should also take it into account. For this girl, I forgot about this moment a little. For an object in the shadow to match as accurately as possible, contact with the surface, you need to add the following. Let me close all the folders. We don't need those. All right, and let's create a contact shadow for this first girl here. So what is it? An object in shadow has a diffuse shadow anyway, when it is with the sky. So how to make it? That's very easy. We create a new layer. We place it under our project, under the girl. Next, we create an ellipse, basically a any size and fill it with color which we took from a white preferably light object somewhere in the shadow so for example right here so we have this color of the shadow quite correct next by pressing f5 we select foreground color the one that we've chosen okay fill it up then we can deselect and lay this layer in multiply mode. So this is the, we get this kind of oval and we can place it under the girl. And of course it's very bright right now, but I think that it's clear. We just need to blur it correctly. Use the Gaussian blur filter and achieve maximum blur, almost like this. Now it's still very strong. The contact shadow is very strong. And of course we can focus again on the reference render. As you can see, you can barely notice it. But still, if we switch off this girl, we see a light shadow. So keep that in mind. Let's get rid of this shadow here. And let's change the opacity up to 10% like this. So a light shadow creates a, a light contact between an object and the surface. And then in theory, the shadow between the legs here should also be deeper, brighter. So what do we do? We just copy this layer and scale it down. Now it's invisible because the opacity value is low. Let's increase it and set it here between the legs. This way your object will match the surface better. All right. And the girl must also have a more serious contact shadow here. Let me call it contact shadow. Copy this layer, Control J, and move it to our girl number three. We'll place the layer at the very bottom. But 
The contact shadow always has the direction if the light source is on the right. There are some blackouts, direction from a direct shadow from the sun. Like this. But it shouldn't go beyond the edge of the direct shadow. That's why we'll remove it if anything crops up. Now it looks well. There's a contact shadow here and there. All right, that's all. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next lesson.